Good day, sixth graders. So in this short video, I'm going to show you how to build on top of a basic pinch pot form. You see the pinch pot underneath here of red clay is a half sphere or a hemisphere, and it's somewhat hollowed out. And then on top of that are built lots of things that might remind you of, say, an underwater environment. If you want to build a monster out of your pinch pot, that's fine. If you want to do an environment, you can, whatever you'd like to do. But here we go with our pinch pot. Now this piece of clay is not in the correct form for me, so I'm going to form a ball right now. I'm going to take it and with the stronger parts of my hand, press it, press it, press it, with my eyes closed very often so I can feel the correct form here of a ball. Now the ball is kind of irregular. You see it has some imperfections and oftentimes what I do is I very gently pat it with one hand while holding it with the other. And as I do this, that extra little bit of force coming down on the surface of the ball helps to refine the ball, make it a little bit better. So again, with my eyes closed, I can do things like that. Now this is about a pound of clay and I only need half of that. So I'm gonna tear this in half and here we go. I'm gonna use a shearing action. One hand, one hand goes one way, one hand goes the other. And I'm tearing it in two, into two pieces. And I'll use both here in just a little bit. I'll put this one off to the side. It's best if you have lots of clay if you don't wish it to dry out, go ahead and put it in a ball. Smaller pieces dry out much more quickly, but a large piece does not. So good technique if you wanna preserve your clay. This ball, once again, or this piece of clay, once again needs to be formed into a ball. So you're gonna have lots of practice with the stronger parts of your hand making this ball. This one you can tell is quite a bit smaller than the last. What I'm going to do is to take my thumb and I'm gonna push my thumb into this ball up to the knuckle. There's the knuckle right there. Pushing that in, giving it a twist so that that hole opens up. I'm now gonna use a gentle pinching action like this so my thumb can be on the inside and my fingers on the outside, applying pressure against the walls of this pinch pot to thin them out a little bit and broaden out the bowl. And again, this is a good thing to practice doing with your eyes closed, just like my eyes are closed right now. So it's the sense of touch that I rely so heavily upon, not really my sense of, sense of sight right now at all. You have to rely on your sense of touch, and this is a great opportunity to do so. You can tell if some areas are thinner than others, and if there are thinner areas that your fingers detect, just don't squeeze or press on those areas as much, okay? Find areas that are a little bit thicker or areas that are of uniform thickness and gently squeeze those areas to begin to open out the ball and to continue opening out the ball so the inside is a bit more hollow. I'm gonna open my eyes now and I see I have a hollow ball and there's the outside, that's called a pinch pot. And the walls are fairly uniform, pretty much the same. These are called the walls. And I could use, this as the mouth of a creature if I wanted to and set the ball up like this, or I could turn it over like this. And of course it doesn't have to stay a ball, does it? I could change the shape of that, can't I? It doesn't have to stay this very uniform shape. If I wanna change the shape of that, I certainly can do that. Now, what I'm going to do with this other clay is begin to add pieces to this and maybe just make an environment in my case because I like that idea, an underwater environment. Notice I pinch off a little piece of clay, make a ball, and this, little ball rolled out with the ball of my hand. See the ball of my hand and the palm of my hand? That can become a coil. A coil is a rope of clay. And I can flatten that coil with, with the, my hand. I can bend that coil. And if I were to attach this coil, I would have to do a little bit of slipping and scoring. So I'm gonna create some slip there with my finger, just a tiny drop of water, and some slip here with this finger, a tiny drop of water 
And my modeling tool, I'm gonna to use it to make some little cuts, some score marks, quite a few actually. And the same on this surface, and then gently press those together. Now, if you don't slip and score the way I showed you, slipping and scoring both surfaces, there's a real good chance that things will fall apart. I can continue on this way using my hands and the table surface to roll out these longer shapes, flatten them out, make a forest of eelgrass if I want to, a little water to create the slip, some score marks on both surfaces. You can use your tool to bring your water over if you want, and then gently, gentle pressure to press them together. You can see that this is a great way to build. Now be careful not to make these coils of yours too long and too slender, because things that are long and slender tend to break easily especially if they're long. If you want to make something super long, that's okay. I'm going to make a fairly long coil for my ball in my hands. Take it on the work surface, give myself plenty of room to work, begin to sp uh, stretch that ball, that piece of clay out to form a coil. I can even change the coil to run from fatter to skinny if I want to. Now this could be, say, the tail of some gigantic underwater creature if you wanted it to be. But the problem would be that if you attach it like this, this long section probably will get broken off later on. Ceramics is that way. However, if I attached it here in two places, there and there, slip and score, chances are it would survive. It wouldn't get broken off. So I could use that as a tail for a big creature or, what I, or a tentacle for like an octopus, what I think I'm gonna do in this case is roll the clay like that and maybe flatten it just a tiny bit. And I think that will help me to make like a snail shell. Kind of looks like a snail shell there with a flat bottom. And then I can just build the top part of the snail right there. Let me go ahead and attach that, say right here, slip, and score, now not just that surface, right, but the surface at the bottom of the, of the snail. And here's the other surface, slip and score. Here I'm bringing water over with my tool. And I'm gonna add some other features later for that snail. And wiggle them together with some pressure, and then they should be good. But lots of slipping and lots of scoring, otherwise things do fall apart, all right? One test for dry clay, because the, your hands will dry the clay out, if you're not careful. Take a bit of your clay if you think it's too dry, make a ball, make a very short coil like this. You can make it on top of your paper. You can see the paper is absorbing moisture. And then bend that coil. If you see cracks along the edge like that, it means the clay is beginning to dry out and might be too dry. So these small little cracks are not too significant, but if they enlarged and got bigger, I definitely want to get more clay. Now I can add moisture to my hands and moisten my hands, don't have shiny hands, but moist hands. And in that way, putting moisture on my hands help to preserve moisture in the clay, but please do not put moisture directly on the clay unless you're slipping and scoring because the clay becomes very wet, very slimy, and very, very difficult to handle. My snail shell fell off, gravity got the better of it, so I'm gonna go back in here and do more slipping and scoring and put that on again, and hopefully that will stay. I might even do a little welding down here and weld the shell in right there. Okay, not done yet, but you can see the direction I'm going to build upwards and outwards in every direction and I'm gonna to begin to involve some other animals in here in just a little bit. Okay, now you try.